Dear brothers and sisters, I, I want to um, talk from uh, Psalm 85, um, verses 1 to 9, and the, my emphasis will be on verse 6. And the title of the message is, Revive Us Again. God. Revive Us Again. Psalm 85 written by sons of Korah. And many scholars believe that um, the Israelites, the Jewish people that were in exile, in captivity in Babylon for long 70 years, they came back and the scholars, they, they wrote, the sons of Korah wrote the Psalms, Psalm 85, once they returned to Jerusalem. So 70 years, long 70 years. So this psalm is a prayer of um, restoration and revival, something that we really need today. Yes. Psalm is about restoration and uh, revival. I want to point out to you three steps the psalmist took um, in his search for revival. Just three steps. The first step is that the psalmist remembers the past. He remembers uh, the past. And I believe it is important for us to look back and then see where we came from. And that's precisely what the psalmist is doing here. What he's doing is, psalmist remembers the past. Verses 1 to 3. It goes like this. Lord, you have been favorable to your land. You have brought back the captivity of Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people. You have covered all their sin. You have taken away all your wrath. You have turned from the fierceness of your anger. He looks and he wanted to find out where he came from and what the Lord has done for them. What a great job the Lord has done for bringing us back to our country. You see here in these four verses, three verses, we see four things he remembers. That those are very important points, things, four things. Their captivity, he, he thinks about his captivity in Babylon. He, he had to remember that. You remember it's a terrible, horrible time they had back in Babylon. You see in, 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 uh, in, in, in one of the Psalms that they could not sing songs there. They hung their heart on the tree thinking about the Jerusalem, they could not sing, they could not play their instrument, they hung their harp on the tree, they couldn't sing. And they wept, they wept when they thought about, remembered about Zion, the place they left. Look at the mess that we are in, we cannot sing. You see our harp on the tree, and we cry when we think about. Zion. That was the kind of life they had under the captivity, exile. So God had to punish them. So this psalm is in fact uh, telling us that uh, God had punished these people for 70 years and then they brought back. So their heart now is full, filled with gratitude. Oh, what a great thing. God has done. When oppressed through their sins, God looked upon them, changed their life condition, changed their enemies and given them rest. Forgiveness of sins. When God forgives, he forgives them all. They cover, God covered them completely. My dear brothers and sisters, we too need to remember we came from. That's important. It's imperative that we today look back to our life and then see what the Lord has done for us. We were not any different from these people. We were in terrible mess. 
The psalmist say that, you know, the kind, we were in the miry clay trying to get out of that pit of sin. The more we tried, the more we got to sing. We used to go to sing down and down and nobody could help us. Till God came and stretched forth his hand and took us out of the pit. Can you say amen? amen. That's how we are here. Not of our might. We didn't do anything for that matter. It is grace. As we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 4 and 5. It goes like this. But God. Say but God. God. Everybody say but God. God. Who is rich in mercy. Oh my God. His mercy is indeed. Who is rich in mercy because of his great love. 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 You take all your life. Try to meditate and try to find the meaning of love. You will terribly miss. It is so deep. Amen. So with his mercy and love. He loved us. Even when we were dead in trespasses. We were dead. We had no life. We were dead in sins and trespasses. Made us alive. Yes. You and me today. We had a dead spirit living in us. But today we are alive. And our spirit is alive today. Thank God for the wonderful uh, work that God has done in our life. Made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Say grace. How can a Christian ever forget the word grace? I want to share with you a little bit about the shape. Just one a definition about grace. This came to my mind long time ago. And I wrote that down in my Malayalam book. I don't have it now. But I have it written in my note here. And that's so wonderful. Really you'll come to know how great God was. And what it means to talk. You know you need to talk about grace. And it is like that. Grace is Taking an unholy man from this unholy world, making him holy, putting him back to the same unholy world. It is important. It's a little bit difficult. Be with me, you will understand at the end of it. To the unholy world and keeping him holy in this unholy world. It's, it, it's, it's difficult, but it's true. Every word of it is true. I'll explain, try to explain. God is taking an unholy man and woman, you and me. He took us from a, we were unholy. From this unholy world, you and I know we don't live in a holy world. It's unholy, filthy, dirty, anything. So he took us from this unholy world, then making him holy by his grace. You know, as Pastor John Curran was saying, Pastor, you are saying Thomas John. As he said, uh, he said he is saying John Curran. And we have another pastor sitting there. Saying Finney Alimutl, big name. We are all saying that. We are not uh, 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 made, uh, 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 you know, saints or holy people just in a matter of seconds. Yes, indeed, none, with none of our labor in it, but he decided to choose us. The moment you and I became the child of God, God declared us to be holy. He justified us and sanctified us. He called us Saint, Saint Thomas, Saint Korean, Saint Koreakos. You have so many Saint Koreans here. I three, four, four. I don't know a lot of Saint Koreans. I don't know what we have done to be here. Okay, so so grace is taking an unholy man from this unholy world, making him holy. He made us holy. Then he did not take us home. He said, "You go back to this unholy uh, 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 world." Uh, and keeping him holy. So he is keeping us holy every day in this unholy world that we live in. This is what grace is all about. Can you really believe what the Lord has done for us? So remembrance. Step number one, the psalm is remember. So remembrance is one of the first steps on the path of um, revival. The second step on the path of 
revivalist, a cry. You see that in verses 4 to 77. A cry to restore and revive again. A cry. You know, these people came back. But they were not right. Their hearts were not right yet with God. So there is a cry. So Psalm is, Psalm is second supposed to, you know, a cry to restore and revive again. How many of you want to really want God to touch you, to revive you, and give you a really, real good revival and make you all new again? If you want a revival, raise your hand, please. You know, you're free here. Uh, uh, to raise your hand, you'll say hallelujah. I don't see uh, anywhere in the constitution of this church. When people come to the church, keep your mouth shut. Don't say hallelujah. It's nothing like that. So if you feel free, say hi. It's, after all, it's the uh, house of the Lord. Praise God. So open up your eyes. Sometimes, you know, get, let it go. Be free. Enjoy the presence of God. So sometimes you feel like saying hallelujah without any reservation. No matter what, I don't think what my neighbor is thinking about it. I say hallelujah. Right, praise, praise, yes, pastor. Yes. Yeah, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are the children of God. The Holy Spirit is living in our heart. And we cannot afford not to say hallelujah. We say hallelujah, praise the Lord, glory to God. So the second step here is that a cry to restore. Praise God. So Israel was back in the land of uh, 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 Jerusalem or it came back. But they were not completely right with the Lord. The psalmist speaks in this about their condition at that time. So there is a need for restoration, restoration four and five, verse four and five, restoration that we need, we all need restoration. What is restoration? The simple definition, a simple explanation would be this, restore us, that is important. I want to emphasize today just two words mainly, restore us, that will come later, but to restore us. So restore us, he says, talking about the Jewish people, but in our case, it, it, it should be individual, you know. The restoration should be individual, and then it becomes corporate or collective as a church. Oh God, our salvation, and cause your anger towards us to cease. That's uh, the, the, the verse four and five. Will you be angry with us forever? Will you prolong your anger to all generations? So restoration can be defined as making something new again. Reinstatement. Bring it back to the original state. That is restoration. Restoring can also make things better than their current state. If you are in a, in a difficult situation today, you're not happy, something goes wrong with you, but God is specialized in restoring people. He can do that this morning to you. So our Heavenly Father's restoring power is one of the greatest promises that we have in the, in the Bible. Praise God. So, um, so, so, the, so, so they say this is a confession. They say we have to confess. They, that's their confession today. They said we want restoration. That's a confession. Can we really make a confession? Lord, I need restoration in many areas of my life. I need you really for your help from you. Restore me this morning. That should be our confession. A confession of a need for repentance in the lives of God's people. All of us need restoration. All of us. All of us. You and me. Everybody sitting here. We all need restoration. Why? You need restoration when we don't spend time. Listen. You, don't, you need. I need. We need restoration when we don't spend time with the word of God. I, I don't know if uh, they can put this scripture on, 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 on the screen. Joshua 1.8 if it is possible. Uh, if you don't have it, it's okay. Is it possible I gave the, um, the references there? All right, yeah, yeah, you can see that. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. See how important that is? There's another word I don't want. So you need, we need restoration if you don't spend time with the word of God. And we need restoration when you become prayerless. 1 Thessalonians, uh, Thessalonians 5.17 
Well, okay, it's there. Uh, play, okay, pray without ceasing. That's simple. So that's difficult. They say you keep on. It's impossible, right? In a way, you cannot pray all the time. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, all the time. But uh, that means um, you have to have a, a, a habit of praying. Whenever you, the time is given to you, in, when you find time, keep on praying. You cannot afford to not, not to do otherwise. It's a do not cease praying. So if when you become prayerless, it's possible, and then you need restoration. You need restoration, restoration when you do not abstain from every form of evil. I don't want to go to in every form of well, let's 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 read uh, 1 Thessalonians 5:22. That's important. So we'll just read one 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 scripture. Abstain from every form of evil. That's that's a good statement. For every, you know, I, don't, I wanted to go to um, other places like Galatians 5, 9, but there's no type. But this explains volume. This sentence, this verse, abstain from every form of evil. We serve a holy God and you cannot afford to, you know, look here and there for all, all things because God expects our eyes to be holy. You know, it says in everything that we say, we do, or, you know, anything... That should be too, with the aim of glorifying our God. So we need restoration when you do not abstain from every form of evil. And then we need a restoration when heaven is no longer an issue in your life. When heaven is no longer an issue in your life, you need restoration. Why? Because there is something seriously wrong with it. So we need restoration. So, there is a need for revival, it says, and the verses 6 and 7, there's a need for revival. Verse 6 says, you, will you not revive, will you not revive us again, that your people may rejoice in you? That is, that's the emphasis that I want to give. Verse number 6, will you not Revive. Our title is Revive Us Again, Lord. Revive Us Again. And this morning, I believe at least some of us really need a revive. Let our prayer be this. Will you not, oh God, will you not revive us again? I'm not satisfied with my spiritual life. Everything goes wrong, Father. I cannot pray. I cannot read. I cannot do anything for you. Something is holding me back. Something is definitely wrong. And I want you to revive me. Let that be our prayer this morning. Revive us again. That your people may rejoice in you. Now, why, what, why do you think God has called us to rejoice in him? The world doesn't give any reason to rejoice. You turn anything on, your radio, television, nothing but, you know, all the junk's going in your spirit and you will be stuck. You may not be able to do it. This is the world that we live in. But here says, the psalmist says, revive me so I can rejoice. This morning, if your prayer is somehow, Lord, revive me because I want to rejoice in you, God will do that. God will make it come to pass in your life. Show us your mercy, Lord, and grant us your salvation. So the psalmist is pleading for a revival. I wish we all plead this morning to God. Lord, I need a revival. I need to rejoice. The world is not my place. I don't enjoy anything that, you know, that the world can offer me. I want you to revive me. I want to rejoice. I really want to rejoice. Revive me. What is revival? A short uh, a definition will be, revival is a return to God and turning from sin. You turn from sin and you return to God, that's revival. I, I like another uh, simple uh, 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 definition, you know. Getting right with God. Easy to remind, remember. Getting right with God. We need to get right with God. There are a lot of areas that has gone astray. You know, that needs to be, needs our attention. So get right, getting right with God. That is what revival is. He understands revival did not come from men. That's, he says, God. So nobody can give us a revival except God. He said, revive us. So let our, our prayer this morning be, oh God, revive us. But when it comes to individual, 
let our prayer be, Lord, revive me, revive me, revive me. Let that be our prayer. Will you not revive us? A revival is a sovereign move of God among the uh, spiritually ready people. So there's a move of God. God is a person, nobody else, but it comes from God. So revive, the psalmist says, revive. We need, we need revive. You know, they came back from, uh, from, from, from Babylon, who the Jewish people, after the captivity of 70 years, they came back with a lot of hopes, a lot of dreams, a lot of aspirations. But they came back, you know, they, they saw something different. They were completely saddened by what they saw. They saw their prestigious temple was in ruins and the walls of the Jerusalem were broken down and the all you know, houses were shattered. They saw everything in jeopardy and in chaos. They could not really enjoy. So they said, God, restoration. As we said, God, we need restoration. We need an outer uh, 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 restoration because everything, as I said, but we need a restoration to you. Other than that, more than that, we need a revival. There's a need uh, for revival in us, for everybody. So what could a real uh, revival look like? Many people, you know, I have seen in India, in Kerala, they really uh, misunderstand uh, uh, revival very much. There is no place um, for emotionalism. There is some, uh, uh, you know, we can give a, a little margin for emotionalism, but remotion, emotionalism is, uh, is not revival. Because I can do any emotions that I want. I can run, I can jump, I can say, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 other times I can interpret, I can prophesy. That's not revival. So it doesn't have much to do with the emotionalism. It says that when real, uh, a real revival comes, there will be an overpowering sense of God's presence. Yes. Yes. You know, you go into your room, you close your eyes. Yes. If you really feel the sense of the presence of God, you know you are in the presence of God. God is talking to me. I can feel him in my body, in my spirit, in my soul. You, when you have that sense, empowering sense of God's presence, yes, yes. that is revived. Holiness. Amen. Lord, you are holy. And with your help, I am holy, Father. Thank you, thank you. I am in front of a holy God. If you have that conviction, and you have that, uh, you real, if you really feel that in your, in your spirit, that is a sign that you are really revived. So, and then commitment. When you have a revival, you will have commitment. That is one sign of your revival. And then unashamed love, unashamed love. You will never be ashamed to share the word of God with anybody for a testimony. You'll go out without any shame. These are all. And then uh, 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 conviction on the whole community. Revival will manifest itself among saints and uh, um, sinners alike. You know, recently we had a, a, a revival. And not only saints go, not only uh, men of God there, not only God's God children went there. The whole people, many, you know, uh, even Hindus, you know, uh, 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 just nominal Christians, many of them went. So when revival happens, these things you can see. So these are some of the, uh, uh, you know, uh, this is how the revival look. Mainly your personal life with God. That's what I would give more important, you know. When you kneel down and when you talk to God, you feel your presence and he knows that he is inside talking to you. You started communication with him and you know I am with God. I feel the presence of God more than anything else. If that happens in your prayer closet, that is revival, my friend. That is your personal relationship. He dwells in me, I dwell in him. He speaks to me, I speak back to him. We have con con conversation. We have, con you know, you have business. God's business. That is revival. The greatest need of the church today, in my opinion, the greatest need 
of the church today, in my opinion, is not mere members. We need members, not the church building. We need the church build building, not money. We need money, of course, but it is not even more missions or you know, evangelism. These are all we need. But the greatest need, you think, you look around, you know, the nominal Christians, where do they stand? What are their testimonies? What is their business? How do they behave in the offices, in the marketplace, at home? More than anything, all this, you know, these things that I said, more than all those things, we need repentance and revival. And this is a season of uh, revival that the church is going through, and pastors have been uh, 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 you know, sharing the word of God, uh, and mostly focusing on revival. So more than anything else nowadays, what we need is repentance and revival. So that takes me to the third step of the psalmist um, uh, in his search for, uh, for, for, for revival. And that is verses 8 and 10, uh, which is the psalmist settles on a plan of action for revival. Okay. Not only he knows now what is revival, but he doesn't settle there. He says, in order for me to walk into revival, I need to do something. So he settles, he chalks out a plan to enter into uh, uh, the, the, the revival. Verse 8, I will hear. I will, that's very, very important. Hear. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and to his saints. But let them not turn back to folly. Surely his salvation is near, and those who fear him, that glory may dwell in you, our land. Many of us are, you know, we, we like revival. We need to be there. Nobody hates the revival, but we are not willing to pay the price. There's a cost to pay. We have to pay this, he may say, no, we, God has done so much. We were in a miserable situation. God brought us from there. Now we are in our country. We want to go across. We want restoration. Not only that, we want to revive. God, to, you know, revive us. We want to revive it so that we can really enjoy in the presence of God. So, how we can get revival? That's what's important. Now we have uh, covered the story, the background, all those things. So what you and I need to do, I'll give you some tips. I'll share you something that came in my mind. Uh, if you like it, use it. And if you don't like it, just discard it. That's all. But you cannot discard because it's from the word of God. Don't ever try to discard it. So long as it's not from the, from the word of God, there's no way you can, you can discard. So let me, but this is kind of funny, but I will, I'll, 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 I'll share it with you, you know. How can uh, uh, we get a speedy uh, recovery or, or, or revival, you know. A quick fix in America, they say. They have fast fix or quick, quick fix. Uh, somebody said, incidentally, somebody said, once said, we could have a revival, you know. He's coming. How we can have a fast revival? If all the disobedience folks would straighten up. If all the disobedience folks will straighten up, we can have a revival. And then all the gossipers. Any here? I don't think so. You may leave the place. Nobody's leaving, so no gossipers here. So if all, if all the gossipers would shut up, no more gossip. Enough is enough. Don't talk ill of others. Keep your mouth shut. Sorry for the language, but this is what he said. I didn't say that. Now I said, I said in a good spirit. Because you are my friends, you will take me as a friend. So, all the gossipers, if all the gossipers would shut up, we, will have, we can have revival. If all the lukewarm folks would fire up. Amen. If you are lukewarm, you know, neither cold or hot in between. It says, if all the lukewarm folks would fire up, we can have a revival. I believe God is talking to some of you. Some of us. And if all the sleeping folks would wake up. Have you ever seen people sleeping in the church? I have. Right now, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think. It says you can have a revival if you don't sleep in the church. 
Praise God. He says, if all the sleeping folks, so there are, would wake up, then if all the depressed folks would look up, when you get depressed, you look, you know, like swain, swain, you know, a pig, you always look depressed, you know. Only one time it looks when it gets fired, somebody kill him, you know. If he, if he feels a threatening situation, it will go. So he says, uh, he are depressed with the heads down. I say, you look up, yes. you get a revival. Mm-hmm. You're all looking up now. So revival is on the way. <laughs> Praise God. And all these dishonest folks would fess up. And if all the discouraged folks would cheer up. If you cannot cheer up, put a... Uh, 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 false smile. Then we can have a revival. If all the uh, uh, disgruntled folks would sweeten up, if all the soldiers of Christ would stand up, and if all the church members would pray up, we can have a half five more minutes, I think. A revival. But there is, it is not all the truth, you know. It's uh, some truth in it, but it's not all the truth. So we have to expound uh, Uh, Verse 8, I will hear the word hear. That means I will go, I say enough is enough, I've done all those things, but I want to hear. I want to hear the voice of God, speak to me God, I'm on my knee. And we're talking about revival. The best thing, be on your knee and talk to God. See, hear what he is about to talk to you. I will hear what the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people and his saints, but let them not turn back. So the psalmist says, I will sit in the presence of God and hear what the Lord go, is going to say. How would you do that? Jesus talking about uh, hearing in John uh, 10, 27, says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. It's very easy actually. You know, many Christians are unable to hear the voice of God because, but Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. If you have been, have been long with your shepherd, Jesus Christ, most likely you will easily recognize his voice. But if you are not in company, if you don't talk with your uh, wife for 10 years, you know, when she talks, she, you may not rec- you know, recognize whose voice is that. And the sheep, in the, in, the, in the sheep pens, a lot of uh, uh, sheep there. But the guy who, who leads them, they come say, okay, Jolly. It's the name of a sheep, huh? <laughs> Not anybody here. <laughs> so he's, he's alert because that voice is so familiar. And if you listen to God, if you read the word of God, if you communicate with God every day, you will recognize Jesus' voice so fast. Yes. And if you don't, then that's a problem. How we recognize? I'll give you just two points, and then I stop. Um, first of all, th- there are two keys. One is silence, you know, keeping away all outside distractions. Yes. Keeping Ma- Matthew 6, 6, Jesus said, but you, when you pray, when you pray, not if, when you pray, Go into your room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in the secret place and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. If Jesus said, go in your room and shut the door, you can do that. In America, everybody, I believe, has a single room, a separate room. Go inside, Jesus shut. He said, he did not say lock the room, you can go. Shut the room. That means, you, you know, you're trying to uh, get rid of all the outward disturbances. You know, uh, you have uh, 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 shut your door, shut off your TV, put the phone away. This is serious, difficult to do. Try this. You will step into revival. Stop returning the text. Stop talking, taking calls. Shut off the tablet. Can you do that? This is serious business, man. You have to pay a price. You, there's a cost to pray. Go inside if you ever long to have revival. If you ever long to walk into revival, Jesus says, go into your prayer closet. Shut the door. Shut, say, get detached from all distance from all these disturbances. Shut off the TV, the television. What all good things that is going to give you when you're talking about God? It's revival. 
Having done all this, you got victory or good portion. And then we have, they need stillness. That's something different. Now you got all the, you know, uh, outward uh, disturb distractions over. But then you have, you need stillness. That's very different. And then when you, you really want stillness, then you have a problem. This is more, most difficult. You, when you begin to pray, thoughts will come. You know, how, is, how are my kids? Did I pay my bills? Are my children behaving properly or studying well? Your health issues, failure, future, finances, this is your flesh. So what you can do? Begin some, you know, praise and prayer. When you do that, you, you, your mind will be quietened, will be smooth. You know, when all the all things around you become shadows in the light of you, that is the presence of God. That is the stillness that we get. Meditate a passage. Praise and, you know, worship and prayer. These are the things that you can do. Um, these are the steps that you can try. And this is going to work. And I want to conclude now because my time is running out. Let our prayer, the main agenda of prayer these days should be, Lord, revive me again. Let the church prayer will be, Lord, revive us, the church. I want to conclude. Can you close your eyes for a minute? We need revival. We need, it is our personal, in our personal lives and in the life of our church. Our evangelists can't bring it. Singers can't bring it. Good wishes and fond desires will not bring it. What will bring revival? When we remember who we are and what the Lord has done for us, we repent of our sins. When we repeat the first works of the church, we will be in a position where God can send us revival. I want revival. How about you? Let's seek God for more than a meeting. Let's remember, repent and request for revival. May God bless you and thank you so much.